Hey there friends, Dave Politis, k Missing Project, copyrighted edition for a video channel. And this is a Bigfoot class. Yeah, it is. And uh, we're going to talk about some things that we've never talked about before. And it's going to focus in on how you look at an area and how do you research an area. And we're going to focus on Pennsylvania. A specific part of Pennsylvania so you're gonna be fascinated by this before I get going uh, a viewer named Jim said hey Dave I hope this finds you well I saw this and thought of you something to keep you warm on those cold Montana days it was great seeing you in Golden I love the new movie missing 411 the UFO connection Wishing you all the best. And Jim sent me this. I gotta say, I don't wear a lot of things, but I'm gonna wear this one. This is uh, Nine Line. And on the back, you can see why I got it. Search and rescue. Don't leave anyone behind. I'll wear it. Thank you, Jim. That was very kind of you. And, uh, very nice. Very nice to the people. People always ask me, Dave, what do you drink? Well, I drink this a lot, actually. And this is uh, Zevia Organic Tea, Sweetened Black Tea with Lemon. And it's not sugar, it's Stevia. And I think it's their best drink myself. I drink a lot of Stevia stuff. A lot of rumors going around with Sevia. Most of them are not true. It, uh, it's a good replacement for sugar if you like that kind of stuff. Right now, if you hear in the background, we've had 60 mile an hour winds in northern Montana for the last three days. Uh, it was three below this morning when I got up, and right now it's at eight degrees. Uh, I had to go out and run a bunch of errands, and it was cold. <laughs> there weren't even any ice fishermen out. Uh, yeah, it's only supposed to last for another couple days. Then we'll be back up into the 30s and 40s again, so not that bad. So, I've talked to you before about just the last six months of my life. I felt that I've been getting led around. Even going back before that, last two years of my life. I felt that way when I was making the UFO connection. Things were just falling in my lap. Well, today, actually last night, things started to fall in my lap again. I was contemplating how I'm going to approach this episode in the Bigfoot class. And there were a couple ideas I had. I wasn't real happy with any of them and then all of a sudden I got an email got an email from Stan Gordon Stan and I are old friends he lives in Pennsylvania and as far as Bigfoot researchers go I rank him at the at the near top of all Bigfoot researchers I know very credible guy he's been doing this since the 60s uh, very competent, smart, con uh, very conservative with his research, meaning he doesn't take any bold steps, kind of like me. But he has an open mind. And he won't be intimidated by people. And what do I mean by that? A lot of people will see somebody on TV and they say, I want to align with that person. Uh, they got a PhD and... Uh, astrophysics and uh, they talk real well and I think I want to align with them. I'll follow their thinking. Rather than being an independent thinker, read a lot of different books and come up with your own thoughts. Yeah, that's really the way to do research. And Stan was doing research on Bigfoot way before there really was many people doing it at all. And he didn't know it, but he was in one of the hot spots in the nation. Westmoreland County in Pennsylvania. At the time, he knew that there was a lot of strange things going on, <clears throat> and he wasn't going to 
go with the thoughts of the 60s and 70s that this was just an ape or a gorilla. And Stan, being that independent thinker, wasn't, this is Stan, he wasn't really going to fall in line with a lot of the Bigfoot researchers out there. He made friends with law enforcement people, first responders, and they started to feed him some of the calls that they were getting on things. And he started to document them. And he went out there with two ears and one mouth, listening twice as much as talking, and trying to understand exactly what was happening in his area of the world, Westmoreland County, PA. Now, where is that? Well, let's talk about it. This is Pittsburgh. This is Westmoreland County. Now, you're going to get a two-for-one today. Actually, a three-for-one. Three-for-one. When I was really young in high school, I did read a lot of books about UFOs. And in literature classes and things, I would always migrate towards reading about some UFO theory or book or something. And in my school, they didn't care what you read as long as you were reading. So I was, I was pretty astute to what was going on in the UFO world when I was pretty young. And then as I, everybody knows, as I was older, much older, <laughs> Uh, I was given this assignment by a couple people to go out and find out the truth about Bigfoot. Now, did life, did life set me up for that by having an understanding of the UFO world and Bigfoot? And then later becoming a, a UFO investigator for MUFON, which I am still today? I don't know. But it's odd the way it all came together. Now for Stan, he was living in the hot spot probably of the nation for the most unusual all-in-one county, let's say. Yeah, Skinwalker Ranch is pretty unusual too, but Westmoreland County, a lot of strangeness. Now personally, I migrated then to missing people. And in the area around Westmoreland County, a lot of missing people. In Westmoreland County, not so much, which is pretty weird. Now, Stan and I talked today. It was a great conversation. I always like talking to him. He posted on his website kind of the highlights of 2022. And I'm going to actually read you some of those in a second. But he also said, Dave, you know, you've done some good things and where you've gone in your research has paralleled a lot of what I've done in my research. And your cautious nature is very similar to mine. And then we talked about how in Westmoreland County there are there aren't nearly the missing people that there are in other parts of Pennsylvania. Then he talked about a place called Chestnut Ridge. Chestnut Ridge is kind of a mountain range ridge line that goes about 100 miles through Pennsylvania near going through Westmoreland County. Now that ridge has had everything imaginable happen in it, including a ton of Bigfoot sightings, Thunderbirds, orbs, UFOs, almost everything you can imagine. And Stan just started a documentary way back in the 60s. He didn't understand back then that it appeared that maybe all this is related and when we were talking today, we were talking about multi-dimensions, portals, etc. 
and trying to understand why certain areas of Pennsylvania are these hotspots. Now, Pennsylvania is one of those weird states that straddles the Atlantic Ocean and it straddles the Great Lakes. It's right in between those two locations, which is odd. But I wanted to I wanted to read you what this man has done, and I want your mind to start to understand how strange this area is. Headline is, this is all Stan's work, a very active year 2022 for UFOs, UAPs, and ground level balls of light, Bigfoot, and cryptid encounters reported in Pennsylvania. And I'll say he said Bigfoot and cryptid encounters. I've been taking UFO sightings and other anomaly reports via phone from the public since 69. I continue to receive yearly reports via phone and email from residents of Pennsylvania concerning sightings, UFOs, UAPs, and encounters with Bigfoot and other cryptids, usually creatures that science has never confirmed, as well as other unusual events. I've been out in the field conducting on-scene investigations since 65, and after 63 years of research on these topics, I have yet to personally observe a UFO or Bigfoot. Now that to me is really odd. Usually, if anyone's been in the field any amount of time, they've seen one of these things. I've seen multiple of these things. Now, I should say, Stan and I talked today, and he said, Dave, read the whole thing if you want. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he says, no, you have my support. And again, if you Google Stan Gordon, Bigfoot, his name's going to come up and his work is going to come up. And if you go to Amazon, you're going to find his books, and they are a 10 plus. So let me go on. Let me be clear. Many UFO UAP observations reported are misidentifications of natural or man-made objects. Some sources for those observations have been determined to be bright planets, stars, brilliant belied meteors, lights of, on aircraft, drones, balloons, advertising banners, etc. Even Bigfoot observations have at times been determined to be very large shaggy dogs, bear sightings common in the state of Pennsylvania, and hunters in camouflage clothing. Some other reported cryptid sightings are misidentifications of other wildlife. Each year, however, many credible witnesses report observations of strange objects in the sky and encounters with unusual creatures on the ground that can't be easily explained away. One of the things when you're uh, MUFON, Mutual UFO Network Investigator, you need to know the planets in the sky. Now, somebody wrote in to me the other day, hey, Dave, that flashing ball that you described that flickers different colors, it's probably serious because it flashes different colors. Hey, oh, yeah, I know. I know. I know all the stars. I, I get that. The one I'm reporting is actually under the cloud level. And if you watch or you listen, you know, I've reported that. So I get that. But thank you for the reminder. The UFO activity continued through most of 2022. However, it did begin to quiet down as the temperatures began to drop and snow fell in the Commonwealth. A couple things with that. It probably dropped because there was more clouds in the sky and there's less people outside standing around looking up in the sky. As it gets cold, people come indoors. During the year, there were reports of what were described as large, solid, cigar-shaped objects observed in daylight. Various witnesses reported that these objects suddenly just vanished from sight. There were reports of large, black, triangular objects. Among other observations of high-altitude lights making erratic movements in the sky. The year 2022 will be remembered, however, for the unprecedented increase in the reports of low-level encounters with many UFOs. Those small orbs or balls of light reported close to the ground or on the ground, and in some cases approaching, approaching within feet of the witnesses. Very similar to what we talked about on the Skinwalker Ranch series. Now, many of you can watch all of those that I did, which are many videos, right here on this channel. And we reviewed all of those Skinwalker Ranch episodes. 
While many reports came in from rural wooded areas, there were other cases reported from more populated areas near housing developments. There have been cases reported of these smaller objects appearing inside of homes this year and in the past. I first became aware of those close range encounters with these smaller unknown objects in the 60s, but it was in the early 70s when I was investigating incidents in different areas that local residents were reporting various types of ano anomalistic activities near their properties, including small luminous objects floating around and near their homes. Over the years, I've interviewed numerous witnesses and have received information from widespread areas on cases concerning observations that these smaller objects on the ground are just above the ground. These objects have ranged in size from a few inches to a foot or two in diameter. They are often described as to be the golf ball to baseball size. The shape is most commonly spherical. However, other configurations have been reported. These objects are often light sources for various colors. They sometimes look solid, while in other cases, they look transparent. Here you go. We talked about balls of light, orbs, at many different sites. They're seen a lot of different places. And most commonly, they're described as having almost like plasma inside. Now, these things are often seen in conjunction with a cryptid sighting or a Bigfoot sighting. It's weird. During 2022, there were also some close range daylight Bigfoot encounters reported. Other cryptid cases were reported as well as observations of unusually large flying creatures such as thunderbirds. Other strange entities were also reported. During the year, reports were received from widespread areas of mystery booms that caused homes to shake. Some other cases of likely explanations such as locals using tannerite or for firearms training and the passing of a bright fireball meteor. The variety of anomalies have been reported from various locations across the state. There are other more specific geographical locations that have a long history of ongoing mysterious incidents with UFOs and Bigfoot and various paranormal activity, and they continue to be reported active with unusual encounters. The Chestnut Ridge in southwest Pennsylvania has been a historical hotspot for these reports. Many residents along and close to the ridge have reported many strange incidents. Westmoreland County, Fayette, and Indiana counties in this region have been quite busy with strange incidents during 2022. The following is a synopsis of some of the more interesting cases that came to my attention. Armstrong County. A man who lived in rural Armstrong County was concerned that his water line under the house was freezing up during a local deep freeze, so he went outside at 3 a.m. He was partly inside of a crawl space when he heard a strange humming, clicking sound coming from outside. The next day, his neighbor called him and told him about the strange object that he saw hovering over his barn across the road during the time that he was in the crawl space. I was able to interview both the witnesses involved. The neighbor told me that he was awakened at 3.45 by the sound of his horses being disturbed by something. The horses were running around in a tizzy. The man began to walk toward the barn. He approached to about 150 feet from the barn when some lights appeared over the barn. The lights were shining down and he could see the horses moving around. That's when he saw an object hovering about 20 feet above the barn. I gotta tell you, right away, right away, my mind goes to animal mutilations. Why are they hovering around a barn with animals in the middle of the night? The object looked teardrop shaped about 65 to 70 feet long. The object had a smooth silver or metallic look that looked similar to stainless or galvanized steel. It looked solid and smooth, the man said. The object was emitting a humming and buzzing sound. There were numerous lights across the street of the object that looked around. There were approximately eight rows of 20 to 30 lights. The lights would change from red to blue to black to red. The man watched the object hover for five minutes. A camera phone was in the house. As he watched, the lights suddenly went out, everything went dark, and the object just disappeared. He did not see the object move away from the area. The horses seemed to go back to their normal behavior just seconds after it vanished. Strange. 
Yeah, that sound is the wind ripping at about 60. January 15, 2022, sighting report of unknown object over the trees in Pennsylvania, West Virginia border. Sighting was investigated in the report submitted by Jim Brown. Jane Doe was in her kitchen preparing breakfast. She decided to take out her trash to a garbage container near her back porch. She went out to the back door and saw what she described as a large, dark hole in the sky. She immediately went back inside to grab a camera to get a picture. Smart lady. When she turned around to open her aluminum storm door, she received a shock like static electricity from the metal handle. She went on inside, got the camera, and returned outside. She estimated this took no more than 15 to 20 seconds. But then she returned, the dark object was gone. She went out into the yard and searched the sky and nothing was found. After two minutes, she gave up, went back inside. Again, she received a shock on the aluminum door, only this time more severe. After going inside, she called a neighbor, or referred to as Sally. She knew Sally had an interest in strange and paranormal events. Sally dressed and went to Jane's house to see what was going on. At 8 a.m., she arrived and went to Jane's kitchen door and knocked. When she reached for the aluminum door, she also received a shock when she touched it. Neither of them could account for anything abnormal except the repeated shocks. Seeing an opening in the sky reminds me what they described at Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, something above the meadow opened up and some type of creature crawled out, jumped onto the meadow and ran off. I've heard similar stories many times. I don't discount what this lady said one bit. Now my question is, did she just happen to be in the right place at the right time to see this opening occur? Is it possible that maybe these openings are occurring all the time? And this is how the cryptids or even the Bigfoot go from dimension to dimension? I have no idea. Just thinking outside the box. January 17, 2022, Indiana, Indiana County. A man driving through the town during the early afternoon noticed a huge dark bird in the sky. The witness was an avid outdoorsman and realized that what he was seeing was unusual. He quickly sped off to try to get a better look at the huge flying creature. He estimated the wingspan was about 16 to 20 feet. That's huge. I don't know if anything alive in the sky that that's big, that's alive. The tail was very unusual. He described the tail to me as looking about three to four feet in length with black feathers and having a triangular shaped appendage at the end. Witness observed it flying across the sky. Go back to what I say said before is this is pretty close to what they describe as a thunderbird. And the Native Americans have described this back in their time as well. Now, nobody's ever gotten a good picture of one that I know of. There's been some video I've seen, possibly decent, possibly not. But the real question is, is the reason we don't have any actual samples of these creatures because they go back to another dimension? There's got to be some reason why we don't have them. Fayette County, a daylight close encounter with a mysterious exploding small sphere in Fayette County, PA. Following report was submitted by Jim Brown, city of Shoaf, S-H-O-A-F, April 6, 2022, 3 p.m. Cloud cover, but dry rain in the forecast, mostly calm, slight breeze contacted by a witness who wanted to know if I had any ideas about what he experienced. I know this man personally and he knows I investigate unusual activity. He wanted to know if I'd ever heard of anything like this. He made no claim of anything paranormal, just wanted his curiosity satisfied. Since I live nearby, I also did an on-site visit to obtain more details. John and Mary were doing yard work. Mary was spreading out mulch around a couple of trees. John was pushing a wheelbarrow with some topsoil, filling holes in the ground. Mary saw something reflective in the field behind their house, about 50 feet away. She called to John to look since he was much closer to it. 
He looked up and saw a balloon drifting about 10 feet above the fence line. He described it as one of those mylar balloons since they have, you'd see at a party, silver and circular, about two feet in diameter. He watched as it drifted closer to his location. John walked a bit closer to the brush at the edge of the field while Mary continued to watch it drift closer. Both agree on what happened next. Suddenly it got very bright. Prior to this, it simply looked like it was reflecting natural light. Now it appeared to shine on its own. About two seconds later, both witnesses saw it explode. At the same time, they describe a small lightning bolt shot from the explosion to the ground. The explosion sounded like a small firecracker followed by a snap like a spark. The spark started a small fire where it struck the ground. John immediately grabbed his shovel and ran up to put the fire out before it spread to the rest of the field. Let's stop here. UFO. Obviously, you can't identify it. Starts a fire. I've heard this before. Uh, I've heard of people seeing a UFO in the mountains of Colorado start a fire. Can't verify it, but I've heard this. He had the fire out after a couple of hits with the shovel. It was then that he noticed another wisp of smoke coming from the fence line about 100 feet away in the same direction as the object had just come. He ran down there and extinguished that fire as well. Both watched the field for a few minutes for any signs of smoke, but nothing more was seen. Weird. I've never heard of anything like that. Very unusual. Uh, Ligonier, Westmoreland County. Westmoreland County. Uh, this is where I just... So, the orange square, or the orange area, is Westmoreland County. Ligonier is right there. And right here is Kecksburg. Why is Kecksburg important? Many years ago, there was a crash of a UFO in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. And every July, I think it's July 22nd and 23rd this year, they have the Kecksburg UFO Conference. If you're anywhere in Ohio, Pennsylvania, anywhere in that part of the country, you need to go. It's really a good, good event, fun. And in fact, Stan's gonna be there this year. But this UFO crash there, there were reports that army personnel showed up, sealed off the area, and put an object that sort of looked like a, a bell on the truck and drove it away under cover of a giant tarp. Very unusual. Now, I wouldn't put a lot of credit in that, except that this area has a long history of UFOs and strange incidents. So some people may say, well, Dave, maybe it was a army test subject. No, I don't think so, because there's too many strange things going on in this area. So in Ligonier County, or in Ligonier City, Westmoreland County, County, during the afternoon of April 14, 2022, just a short distance down the road from the town, independent witnesses observed what was described as a huge metal object low in the trees. Some reports described the object as solid looking, about the size of a football field, flat on the top and the bottom. There were rows of lights surrounding the object. Witnesses told me that she had to turn away from looking at the object as the lights were so bright. Oh, strange. Again, all of this area I'm talking to you about, tons of Bigfoot sightings. April 28, 2022, Trafford, Westmoreland County. 9.37 p.m. the sky was clear. The witnesses was looking toward Monroeville when he saw something in the sky that baffled him. He observed an object that had a solid outline and was football shaped. The ends were somewhat pointed like the ends of a football. There were many lights on the object, only some were blinking. There were seven red lights in the center of the object. The top was a red, white, and yellow light, and red lights were on the top. On the bottom were red, green, and white lights. The object looked like, looked quite large at a distance. 
the object was moving steadily through the sky, sailing over the valley towards Pittsburgh. Sound like anything I've told you about? Sounds very similar to what I recorded here in this valley and I showed you on a video. Westmoreland County, May 8th, 2022. Again, Westmoreland County, the area inside the orange kind of square thing. A woman was taking an afternoon walk with her dogs in the Chestnut Ridge area. The surrounding nature sounds became quiet and the birds stopped chirping. I call that a cone of silence. I've talked to you about this before. Some people that think when this happens, there's a portal opening or there's a portal closing. When you're in the woods and this happens, pay attention. I've only had this happen to me once and I was hunting with a friend in Northern California and we never saw one animal that day <laughs> but we put ourselves back to back on a big tree and we waited for the sounds to come back. So in the area of nature became quiet, birds stopped chirping, the dogs suddenly began to whine and whimper and backed up. Suddenly she saw a figure cross a road in two strides. What she saw was not human. She told me that this was a creature that stood between seven and eight feet tall and covered with long, dark brown and black matted hair and fur. The arms were longer than that of a human and hung down almost to the knees. Ka-ching! Remember what I told you? If you see an image of a Bigfoot and its arms are just the same length of the, as a human, it was a human. Bigfoot arms are much longer. She estimates the creature was only about 10 to 15 feet away and never looked at her. There was no sound or smell noticed by the experience. The creature moved up a small embankment and continued into the woods. The witness told me that after she saw it, she was surprised, rattled, and in denial. Her dogs calmed down and the creature left the area. This general area has a long history of encounters with Bigfoot. This is the drawing that was made of what the witness saw. Good drawing. Notice the length of the arms. Notice that, and I pay attention to this, not a lot of hair, not a lot of hair, not a lot of hair, a lot of hair on the back of the arms. Those are absolute perfect descriptions of the hundreds of Bigfoot sightings I've taken from witnesses. For some reason, the back of the arms, when they point, the hair hangs down. You could see it. But chest doesn't have a lot of hair. Face doesn't have a lot of hair. It's a good report and uh, pretty typical of that area. Afternoon of May 14th, 2022, a witness was in his vehicle sitting in a parking lot in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Anybody know about Latrobe? Latrobe is the hometown for Arnold Palmer, famous golfer. When he happened to look up into the sky, this is when he observed an object that was moving at high altitude among the clouds. The object was moving over a section of Chestnut Ridge in Latrobe. I'm telling you, Chestnut Ridge is it. What caught the attention of the witness was the object was at first seemed to be moving slowly across the sky, then suddenly there was a burst of speed as the object moved out of sight. He was only able to observe it for about 20 seconds. The witness stated that the object, whatever it was, appeared black in color, but he could not determine the shape at the distance. He felt the object could have been quite large for him to see it and photographic at the altitude. The object can clearly be seen in the photo. It was examined by research associates. This is what they saw. This is the photo they took. I gotta say, it's pretty unusual. Nothing that I've ever seen, but pretty clear for a UFO photo. In fact, real clear. Now, if you're a novice at, at research, you're gonna start separating these. Okay, there's the UFO sightings over here, there's the Bigfoot sightings over here, and there's the cryptid sightings over here. And, Let's not the paths cross. 
Well, what Stan was finding was that all of these things are going on in the same area. Very similar to Skinwalker Ranch. The, dis the, the difference in Pennsylvania is that the area was huge. Chestnut Ridge is 100 miles long. And Skinwalker Ranch, you know, not that big. Maybe, I don't know, 500 acres max. But the point being, don't close off avenues of research just because you think it should be. Stan lost a lot of time in his research because at the beginning, I'm sure that he was thinking, well, these can't be related. But he quickly, quickly got to his senses and understood that this is all related. Makes it a lot simple, simpler. June 5th, 2022, Greensburg, Westmoreland County. The witness was driving on Route 30 near Donahue Road area at 5.30 or 6 p.m. He was sitting at a red light and looked up in a clear blue sky to the west. He noticed a silver cigar-shaped object that was motionless. He watched it for about 10 seconds, was observing it when it suddenly just vanished. The witness was certain it was not a plane and could not believe what he saw. Cigar-shaped objects are something in the UFO world that are very common. They're like triangles, they're like saucer shapes, they're like globes. Probably one of the most common of those five. And many times when you're looking at it, you take your eyes off it, it'll be gone. Does it know you're watching it? I don't know. Latrobe, Westmoreland County. June 9th, 2022. About 3.30 a.m., the witness was awakened by his dog that seemed disturbed. The man, thinking the dog needed to go for a walk, opened the back door and observed a small bright sphere that was described as being about three inches in size, perfectly round and brilliant white. Object was about five feet above the ground, moving in front of a tree in the fenced yard. The light from the object was bright, but it did not radiate any light onto the surroundings. The object moved slowly just a few inches from the tree to the left side, then about a foot or two, and then stopped. And then lowered another foot before it headed back around the tree and moved off into the distance. The number of times Stan has seen or has had this reported in conjunction with a Bigfoot sighting is a lot. These small spherical orbs suddenly hide behind a tree and a Bigfoot walks out. Why? Is that a transport method for it? Is that what it can transition into? Is that what it can shape shift into? Ligonier, July 28, 2022, Westmoreland County. Westmoreland County, again, that area right there. Witness outside of town is awakened at 3.04 a.m. and sees a small bright blue ball of light that is about 8 to 10 feet away outside of a window bobbing up and down. The sphere is about a foot in diameter. The light is self-contained and does not emit any external light. 3.04 a.m. 6.12.22 Greensburg, Westmoreland County, 3.05 a.m. A security system notified the homeowner who was located in a housing development outside of town of some movement outside the house. When she checked the video footage, they observed a small sphere floating very close to the house for a few seconds. When Ben was doing his research into religion, the several people in religious circles had told me that the time from 2.30 to 4 a.m., the veil between our world and other worlds is the thinnest. And that's the time that there's movement in that world and the spirits can hear you. And if you look at these sightings, 
I just gave you two at 3.05, 3.14 a.m. Pay attention to those times. August 9th, 2022, Latrobe, Westmoreland County. A few miles outside of town, a witness who had wakened at 2.30 a.m. looked out the window and observed an object hovering above the trees 200 feet away. The witness described the object as solid, big, and round and shaped somewhat like a cantaloupe. The object was of bright orange and red color and glowed brightly. There was a minimal illumination extending beyond the object. There were small green and blue lights on the bottom of the object. They would alternate on and off, but never at the same time. The green lights would come on and blink on and off and then go off, and the blue lights would then come on. This took place while the object was hovering. The object stayed basically in the same location and would move slightly up and down. The object then moved above the trees and was witness lost sight. A lot of times I have conversations with researchers about why would these things have lights that flash on and off and draw attention to them. August 4th, August 24th, 2022, Latrobe, Westmoreland County. The witness was near Route 30 looking toward Derry and Latrobe. That evening in the distance above the trees, the witness observed a very bright red light similar to a taillight color that was not that high in the sky. The light looked oblong with a solid center and with an uneven edges. It was described as looking similar to an oval. The object appeared to be still when it was first observed about two minutes. The object began to slowly move straight down from the sky and was blocked by trees. October 1st, 2022, Derry, Westmoreland County. Westmoreland County. The witness was driving near the Kingston cutoff at 3.10 p.m. He observed a solid metallic cigar-shaped object across Route 217, just above the trees. Object was gray in color and slender. It was about 30 feet in length and about five feet wide. That's darn big. October 11th, 2022, Legonier area, Westmoreland County. Small sphere appears inside a house five feet from the witness. It was three days later, about 40 miles away, that another low-level ball of light incident occurred in a rural location outside of Lagonier and Laurel Highlands. The case is intriguing as it reportedly occurred inside of a house. I interviewed the witness in person and did a follow-up telephone interview as well. The witness told me that she was awakened at 2.30 a.m., remember the time, and went to the bathroom. When she came out of the bathroom, she noticed about five feet away something unusual in the living room. There was a high ceiling in the older room and hovering several feet below the ceiling was a deep blue colored sphere about a foot and a half in diameter. Inside the sphere, the witness observed a gray swirling mass that looked similar to the motion of a lava lamp. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this exactly like that. Object was silent as it moved up and down slightly. The witness recalled taking one small step toward the sphere. This is when she felt a slight tingling sensation. So is, is that the thing feeling threatened and giving you a warning, hey, stay there? She said the sensation reminded her of a pre-jolt of electricity near she was near an electric fence. She recalled looking at the strange round object for about 10 seconds, then suddenly became very sleepy. She immediately went to the bedroom, went to sleep. She stated that she, she that the experience was so stinking weird, her words, as she didn't understand why she didn't keep watching the odd object in her home. She also told me that it was very unusual for her to have fallen asleep so fast after seeing the object since she suffers from insomnia and would normally have never gone to sleep so quickly. When she awakened the next day, she felt very sluggish and groggy for hours. Now, this is important, very important. I told you you were going to get two or three for one. Talk to you about Bigfoot, UFOs. Let's talk about missing people. The first case. All in this area. Okay. Kicksburg UFO crash. All the incidents in Westmoreland County just five miles outside the, the county jurisdiction 
and we have the Collier incident. I will read you right out of Missing 411 Eastern U.S. July 2nd, 1948. P.M. hours, Somerset, Pennsylvania. Ronald Collier, 23 months old. Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd Collier decided to take a short vacation. Lloyd was a coal miner and enjoyed time in the woods away from his job. Family went to a vacation cabins just one mile north of Coozer Lake on the perimeter of Coozer State Park, located approximately eight miles northwest of Somerset, very close to the county limits of Westmoreland. Lots of lush forests in this area. On July 2nd, 1948, Mrs. Collier went outside with Ronald, her 23-month-old son, sat for a short time, then realized it was time for his afternoon bottle. She briefly left the boy to enter the cabin to retrieve the bottle and thought that her husband was close by. When she returned from the cabin, the boy had vanished. They searched the area, nothing was found, and they called law enforcement for assistance. Hundreds of police officers, firefighters, rangers, game wardens, and volunteers swarmed the region looking for young Ronald. On July 5th, three days later, Sheriff Carl Haar stated, quote, The boy cannot be within a half mile of this cabin. We thoroughly searched shoulder to shoulder with more than 100 men through thick brush. He isn't here. Well, when I'm doing the research on this, I'm thinking, well, how far can a 23-month-old boy go? Huh. The search had strange undertones as I read articles that continue to describe the activity. At one point, the sheriff asked the parents to take a lie detector test about the incident. It was apparent that the sheriff was frustrated and he couldn't find the boy and he felt that his parents knew more than what they were saying. The parents took and passed the polygraph and were not under any further suspicion. An article on July 9, 1948, Pittsburgh Gazette stated the following, the possibility that a bear had attacked and drug away 23-month-old Ronald Collier was discounted Thursday by District Attorney Tom Lansbury. Quote, I have talked to forest rangers and game wardens, and they all agree there are no bears in the vicinity where this boy disappeared. Again, this is July 48. Police stated numerous times that they could, find, they could not find any evidence of a kidnapping and no motive. Mr. Collier did not have any significant resources, there was never a demand for cash. Ronald was never found. Why do I tell you this? No evidence of kidnapping. No evidence of animal predation. No evidence the boy walked away. No evidence of no evidence. Nothing found. Boy gone. 23 months old? How far can that boy go in a minute and a half, two minutes, while the mom goes in the house? Think about it. Think about it hard. Now I've stated before that more kids disappeared in Pennsylvania than in any other state in the Union. And in the back of the book, I laid this out for you. It's a very strange set of circumstances that, that leads to this. And it's very uncomfortable to talk about because there's so many kids involved. So, next case involves a girl named Anna Pearl Thorpe. Now this is where the Collier boy disappeared. This is where Anna disappeared. Again, there's the UFO site. All just outside the county limits of Westmoreland. Again, very close to each other. Here's the story. Missing May 5th, 1950. Dunbar, Pennsylvania, age two. So just a month older than the Collier boy. Anna Thorpe was playing at the edge of the woods near her home on Friday, May 5th. Anna's mother was inside the home when she heard a sharp scream from the direction of Anna. Mrs. Thorpe ran into the backyard, could not find her daughter. She yelled the child's name and immediately searched the area but couldn't find her daughter and there were no responses. Anna's two brothers assisted in the search but could not locate her. It was at this point that the Thorpes called for local law enforcement. Hundreds of searchers converged on the Thorpe property by early the next morning. Search and rescue teams scattered over the snake infested woodlands looking for the young girl. Searchers were covering an area inside of one mile from her house 
as they didn't believe she could get much further in the time frame. One group decided to search much further away from the residence. Approximately 24 hours after she disappeared, Anna was found a phenomenal three miles from her home, tucked under a blackberry bush. The girl was naked except for one shoe. Well, how could that happen? Her sweater and dress were lying on the ground near her. Anna was taken to a nearby physician who stated that she had not been molested and only had minor scrapes and bruises. She was in almost perfect condition considering the amount of terrain she covered in 24 hours. A May 7th article in the LA Times had the following paragraph, quote, State police took the child's clothes for further investigation. There's some mystery as to how she got over a 10 picket barbed wire fence and stone fences that apparently separate the wooded area from the field in which she was found. Hello. A child is only going to get over those wire barbed wire fences with a lot of injury and a lot of bruising. Number one. Number two, most kids that age can't take their clothes off. How did her clothes come off? And why were they right where she was found? I want readers to go to their computers and pull up the Google Maps and look at Coozer Lake, Pennsylvania, and compare that to Dunbar, Pennsylvania. My estimate in the distance between the two locations is 10 miles. 10 miles and 26 months is the difference between the disappearances of Donald Collier and Anna Pearl Thorpe. There are many similarities between the two cases. The time frames are much too close to be ignored. In between the two locations where the children disappeared are Indian Creek Valley and two large state parks with massive open areas. There are no large cities between the two spots. I believe the state police took the Thorpe's clothes because they knew she had been abducted. There's no way a two-year-old is going to travel three, mile, uh, three miles over, two, over 10 barbed wire fences in 24 hours. No way. There would be no reason for police to take the clothing if this was merely a missing persons case. I could never locate a follow-up article explaining the police's theory of what might have happened. There is a possibility that police found something on the girl's clothing that caused them concern. Yes. Understand. In this area of the world of Pennsylvania, a lot of weird stuff going on. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you what I've told you in this video. You have UFOs flying all over the skies in this region. You have Bigfoot all over this area. And we know that those two topics cross all the time. What's happening here? Well, we do know from watching the movie that if you listen to hunters, UFOs have been following them in the woods, and UFOs have been taking them in the woods, per their own statements. Next story. Again, the story I just read you, Anna Pearl Thorpe, Collier Boy, and now Jackie Copeland, just off the map to the north in a city called Pleasantville, Pennsylvania. Got it? Pay close attention to this story. Jackie Copeland, May 14th, 1950. The last story was May 5th, 1950. So nine days after Anna Pearl Thorpe, just nine days. Jackie, two years old. Jackie, his three sisters and parents, went to a picnic at an oil company's property outside of Pleasantville. The company was socialized, the family was socializing with others when Jackie's seven-year-old sister told their father that Jackie was gone. At one o'clock, the family started to look for the boy and could not locate him. It was at this point that everyone at the picnic started to participate in the search. In a very short period of time, the state police had arrived and they called for a team of bloodhounds. The oil company called for additional volunteer searchers until there were hundreds of people looking for the young boy. It was evident by late in the evening that bloodhounds could not pick up a scent or refuse to search 
and ground searchers were not having any luck finding him. Again, I ask you, for the parents out there, you have a two-year-old. How far can that two-year-old go in a very short period of time? At 8 a.m. the following morning of Jackie's disappearance, a man named Bevier was searching outside of the main area in a location where an oil re repressuring plant was located. The area is completely surrounded by many, many newspaper articles called impassable swamps. Many of the articles said impassable swamps. As Mr. Bevier and a crew of searchers were walking through the swamps, he accidentally saw Jackie looking around the side of a tree, almost peering, you know? Bevier called his name and Jackie answered. Jackie was found over two miles from the picnic and across swamps that were deemed impassable by search coordinators. Jackie was transported to a hospital where he was met by his family. After being examined by doctors, they stated that the boy had a number of scratches, but he was generally in good condition. 90% of the time, search and rescue coordinators would pump their chests out, ho ho, we found the boy, hurrah, he's alive. We're going home, goodbye. No questioning, no nothing, everything's over. But if they were in passable swamps for a two-year-old, don't you need to ask the question how that two-year-old got there? Don't you need to question the boy? I would wanna know, was he completely wet? Did he swim across the swamps? Could he swim? An article in the Logan Sport Press dated May 17, 1950, had an interview with, with the Copelands and heard Jackie's rendition of what occurred during his night in the woods. The press wanted to hear how the boy got to his location in the swamps, what he had to drink or eat, and how he kept warm. Finally, somebody asked the questions. Jackie was first asked why he left the picnic, and here's the quote. He, quote, he saw something peering at him from behind a big tree. When he approached, the creature scampered into the brush. Quote, friends, that's a quote. Jackie didn't explain anything more about leaving the picnic at that point. The article later explained more of what Jackie stated. Quote, he recounted in child talk his adventure, his adventure in an awful blackness, peopled by a great throbbing giant and a tall friendly tree and wild animals howling in the distance and with unfamiliar shouts of strangers prowling nearby." End of quotes. Now you gotta remember, it's pretty tough questioning a two-year-old, right? Jackie Copeland's explanation of what occurred to him could be very sobering narrative of what might possibly be occurring with the plethora of missing children outlined in this book from the Pennsylvania area. Jackie had gone through a very frightening experience. In the safety of his parents' presence, he was able to recount certain elements of what happened. He did say that he believed he slept through the entire night in the woods. How Jackie was able to sleep under conditions he described as a true mystery, yet many young children were found by searchers in a groggy or semi-conscious state. The question I pose to each and every reader, what was the quote-unquote creature peering at him from behind a tree? I think it's ironic that Jackie mimicked the behavior of the creature when he was approached by a searcher. How could a two-year-old traverse impassable swamps without the aid of some type of mammal? I know that many people would discount Jackie's explanation and say it was just fantasy. The location where Jackie was found was not fantasy. The description Jackie gave of his incident is something that we should all ponder and attempt to understand. I'm clapping because I want people to understand. That was the second book I ever wrote. Hardly anybody talks about this. Missing 411 Eastern United States. But there's stories like this in almost every one of the books. Now the reporters didn't make a big deal about him being at an impossible location. They never said if he was found completely wet. He should have been. If he wasn't wet, he had to have been carried or transported some way. If he was completely wet, 
How did he sleep all night? Why wasn't he cold? Friends, these are the questions we have to ask about what's happening here. Now, in Missing 411, the UFO connection, I definitely made the connection that UFOs are involved in some of the missing hunters. It's obvious. Pennsylvania has a lot of missing hunters. And they have a lot of missing kids. A lot. And this is back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So, I don't know what's happening. I don't claim to know what's happening with these kids. But I do want to find out. And I'm not going to give up. And hopefully, Stan Gordon and his continued research will have something for us. And I trust he will. He's a smart man. So again, Stan's website. Just Google Stan Gordon. You'll find him. And uh, Stan Gordon Bigfoot. You'll find him. That's why I found him today. And he's got a couple of outstanding books. And if you go to Amazon and you just put in Stan Gordon Bigfoot, you'll find his books. In the meantime, I appreciate you being here. The point of this whole class, pay attention to everything going on in an area. Don't discount anything because all of a sudden, if you discount it, you may realize, uh oh, I discounted that two months ago. And now suddenly I have three more of those same events happening in the same area. What is very fascinating to me is Westmoreland County that has tons of Bigfoot sightings and tons of UFO sightings has almost no missing people. We had a saying in the police department. If there was a suspect in a crime, he would never poop in his own backyard. What does that mean? He would never commit a crime in his own neighborhood. Why? Because he didn't want cops peering around in that neighborhood. And he knew that the people in that neighborhood could identify him or she. And sometimes with UFOs, Bigfoot, and missing people, I think the same thing might be true. It seems weird to me. In the meantime, our website, NA, like North America, nabigfootsearch.com. Go to our store, and you can find DVDs and Blu-rays that we're selling on the movie. And we're selling those for the first movie as well. I have 11 books on missing people. Again, this is just one of them. This is Eastern US. And I have three books on Bigfoot. The Hoopa Project, Tribal Bigfoot, and Bigfoot, Wild Men, and Giants. Please do not buy my books on Amazon. I don't sell them on Amazon. People are ripping other people off, charging way too much money for my books. If you can, please just come to that website, nabigfootsearch.com, go to the store, and you'll find them. In the meantime, be nice to your neighbors, be nice to your friends, keep an open mind, and we'll see you soon. Politis, out.